Samam Vishnu Gatim Vipastita. Word for word. Aham, my humble self. He certainly, Krishna, asked by you, Aryamana, as powerful as the sun. Bhavadbi, by you, Achakshe, may describe. Atma Avagama, as far as my knowledge is concerned. Atra, herein, Yavan, so far, <coughs> Naba, sky, Patanti, fly, Atma Samam, as far as it can. Patatrina, <coughs> the birds, Tata, Thus, Samam, similarly, Vishnu Gatim, knowledge of Vishnu, Ipaschita, even though learned. Translation O Rishis, who are as powerful, oh, O Rishis, who are as powerfully pure as the sun. I shall try to describe to you the transcendental pastimes of Vishnu as far as my knowledge is concerned. As the birds fly in the sky as far as their capacity allows, so do the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. Translation, please repeat. O Rishis, who are as powerfully pure as the sun, I shall try to describe to you <coughs> the transcendental pastimes of Vishnu as far as my knowledge is concerned. As the birds fly in the sky, as far as their capacity allows, so do the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. <coughs> Purport, the supreme absolute truth is unlimited. No living being can know about the unlimited by his limited capacity. The Lord is impersonal, personal and localized. By his impersonal feature, he is all-pervading Brahman. By his localized feature, he is present in everyone's heart as the, super, as the supreme soul. And by his ultimate personal feature, he is the object of transcendent loving service by his fortunate associates, the pure devotees. <clears throat> the pastimes of the Lord in different features can only be estimated partly by the great learned devotees. So Sula Sutta Goswami has rightly taken this position in describing the pastimes of the Lord as far as he has realized. Factually, only the Lord himself can describe himself. And his learned devotee also can describe him as far as the Lord gives him the power of description. <coughs> o Rishis who are as powerfully pure as the sun, <coughs> I shall try to describe to you the transcendental pastimes of Vishnu as far as my knowledge is concerned. 
as the birds fly in the sky as far as their capacity allows, so do the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. Sutta Goswami, and as Prabhupada says, has rightly taken this position in describing the pastimes of the Lord. Uh, uh, and very beautifully put, as the birds fly in the sky as far as their capacity allows. Very nice example of birds flying. You know, different birds can fly higher, faster, so on and so forth. <coughs> so as their capacity, just like all beings, you can only do as far as your capacity allows. And to do more than that, uh, it can be dangerous. Uh, and because if you exceed your capacity, who knows what can happen. Things can break, all sorts of things. Just like if you fly in a plane, if you exceed the capacity of its particular construction, then uh, the whole thing can come apart, so on and so forth. So best to stick to your capacity. And of course, uh, um, your, comp your capacity uh, can increase. Uh, as conditioned souls. This is a very nicely, also a similar uh, verse in Bhagavad Gita where <coughs> uh, uh, Arjuna asks a, a similar question. He says, We start in Atmana Jogam, we boot him charge and Arjuna, Buya Kataya Tripti, Sinvata Nasti Memritam. Please describe uh, in detail the mystic power of your opulences, Vibhuti. I am never satiated in hearing about you. Uh, for the more I hear about you, the more I taste the nectar of your words. And Krishna responds, Hanta te katiyisyami didyatna vibhutaya padanyata krushtesna nasanto me. Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O oh Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. Now Prabhupada, in his purport, says similarly the same as he says here, it is not possible to comprehend the greatness of Krishna and his opulences. The senses of the individual soul are limited and do not permit him to understand the totality of Krishna's affairs. Still the devotees try to understand Krishna, Krishna but not on the principle that they will be able to understand Krishna fully at any specific time or in any state of life. Rather, the very topics of Krishna are so relishable that they appear to the devotees as nectar. Thus the devotees enjoy them. Uh, in discussing Krishna's opulence and his uh, diverse energies, the pure devotees take transcendental pleasure. Therefore they want to hear them more and more and discuss them. So, uh, same thing. So, it is not possible. Uh, the the, the uh, senses of the individual soul are limited. Here, uh, a proper says, of course, the supreme absolute truth is unlimited. It's kind of the same theme as uh, 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 Sutta Goswami. First of all, <coughs> he establishes Krishna's greatness, his unlimited position, unlimited. Nitya nityanas chaitananam chaitanas chaitanam eko bohunam yovidilati kaman. There is one, there are many eternals, but of the eternals, one is maintaining all the others. So we are of the same quality, but not of the same quantity as Krishna. Uh, so uh, <coughs> this is something that needs to be understood very, very carefully. And uh, as I uh, just said, that uh, Sutta Goswami is first of all establishing uh, Krishna's uh, position, his unlimited uh, nature, his greatness, and then he will begin to describe <coughs> his activities, his pastime, so on and so forth. Now, uh, uh, in, in, the, in yesterday's purport, Prabhupada mentions <coughs> about envy. Now, the, the envy in the living entity, especially the conditioned souls, is, is, is very deep-seated, very, very deep. And according to their position in the world, according to the modes of nature they are under, that end will be, will be manifest more or less. But that in the living entities <coughs> who come to this material world, originally there was enviousness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, not to a great extent, to some extent. Uh, envious. Uh, Krishna, at some point, 
You know, the Krishna is the supreme. Why he is getting? Who, who knows what the thinking was? Why he is getting all the attention? Just like in in the material world, someone's getting all the attention. Someone's you know doing excelling well, doing. Uh, why are they like that? You know, why aren't I getting it? <laughs> why shouldn't I be like that? Why? Why? What makes them so special? <laughs> You know, it's just like people sometimes, who do you think you are? You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> they present themselves, or, or they, it, maybe they don't even present themselves like that. <clears throat> they, they, so others say that about them. But, and so people, you know, the living entities, even in the spiritual world, some of them are thinking like that. Oh, why is Krishna? Just that little bit of thinking like that is a seed of envy. The seed of envy. And because of that seed of envy, Krishna understands everything. And if it continues for some time, then Krishna makes arrangement to uh, 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 to f f f fulfill that desire. You you want to imitate me? You want to be like me? Therefore, the whole material creation is is is, is created for that reason, where you can be imitation gods. Uh, there is one supreme who's providing for everyone. But uh, when we want to be like that, imitate, or be maybe greater than that. So all of us have come to the material world <clears throat> to be like, a, to imitate Krishna. We're trying to imitate. And, and this is due to the envy. So in the previous purport it was mentioned about the envy. So uh, uh, <clears throat> when, when the descriptions of Krishna are given about his leelas, intimate pastime, so on, so on and so forth, uh, the uh, envy, the envy can come up, and also in another idam tena tapaskaya na bhakta kada na chasusheva cham na cham yam yabishu yati is mentioned that uh, I don't reveal those who are envious. I don't reveal myself to those who envy. Because you are not envious of me, Krishna says to Arjuna. Because you are not envious. Therefore, I am explaining these things. So if you try to <clears throat> explain, especially very intimate things, to a, an envious person, what are they going to do with that? You know, some of them are jealous of you. They're envious of you. Sometimes it's very manifest. Sometimes it's kept secret. They're secretly envious. You know? And so you're, gonna, you're not going to be very inclined to reveal confidential subject matters to them. Are you? You're not going to reveal confidential subject matters to them because they're envious. So generally an envious person will take something, if they're, envious, they're jealous, that, and the jealous person will try to bring that person down so then they can go up. You understand? They can go up. Uh, uh, so, uh, so therefore they're looking at ways. So you may say something that's really something else you know but when the envious person they'll twist it they'll present it in their way for their advantage to achieve their ends you see this is the nature of envy unfortunately this is the nature of envy so they'll twist it so therefore those who are envious and Krishna is the same he doesn't because you are not envious Therefore, I'm speaking to you these confidential things because you are not envious. And then if he says, I don't, you don't, not just to those who are envious, I don't reveal myself to them. Uh, not that he is affected, but they twisted, others are going to be affected. So this envy is deep seated, and, and we come, and in fact, in, in one other purport in Bhagavad Gita, I've, I've mentioned this a few times before, that one of the, the two weaknesses of heart, Prabhupada points out, uh, one of them is to be, to be lorded over, to lord it over the living entities. This is a weakness, actually, because we're not in that position. Our position is something else. <coughs> we are subservient. But we want to be the masters. So this is a weak, you know, when someone tries to be the master, they, they can't actually fulfill that position. So when they try to fulfill it, all sorts of catastrophes will happen. So therefore, it is a weakness. It's not a strength. It may appear because they may, they may present themselves in a very strong way, uh, you know, and trying to establish themselves. They're very aggressive, very assertive, so on and so forth. And, and so because they're trying to establish lording it over. And so this comes from that original envy. 
And as we come into the material world, we come to the, uh, as I said, to the Brahma Loka, but then as we, the desires increase more, we're, giving more, we're given more facility to vent that envy. You want to be like that? Therefore, I, you know, I've created a situation where you're actually not like that, but you can think yourself like that. You can think yourself like that. It's not going to be successful because you're not that. You know, you're, you're trying to be something you're not and you'll never be. <coughs> you'll never be. It's a, but we haven't got it in our heads uh, that we can never be that. We're thinking in some way or other that we're going to lord it over something. We, we kind of know that we can't lord it over everyone, but we're going to lord it over someone. <laughs> There can't be everyone. We're someone or some group of people. We're going to lord it over, them. and and and, and I'll, I'll, because of that, I'll get advantage over them, and I'll I'll get more and more. And, and this is the other, the second weakness of heart is mentioned. Second way to you know get more and more uh, to accumulate more and more and more. As I say, you know, uh, actually, uh, um, uh, we are not in that position. We even can't handle more and more. We want more and more and more. Can you handle more and more? Uh, if you want, to, you want to be the ruler of the world, can you handle it? We may think. We think all sorts of things. Yeah, oh yeah I'll take it. <laughs> I'll be the, the, the president. I'll be the king. I'll take it. But then when you do it, it's a disaster. Right? Everyone, you know, you make so many mistakes, catastrophes. Everyone starts to hate you and you get pulled down. <coughs> I think I mentioned before, you know, I always remember that, that statement of uh, Lee Iacocca, who was the, 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 the CEO of Chrysler. He said, he made one famous statement. He said that, what's your advice to those who want to come up to the high levels of, you know, powerful organization? He said, and he said that, <coughs> be careful who you step on on the way up. Because on the way down, they're going to kick you in the head. <laughs> yeah, you may have an, you may get an advantage over someone, but they're going to remember that. And as soon as you trip up, boom, they're going to get you. <laughs> so if you want a life like that, if you want a life like that, uh, it, it's uh, you know, you know, you may want to imitate Krishna, but it's not so easy. Not so easy. Not so easy. It's, it's impossible. You, you can't imitate Krishna, but somehow or other, we're very stubborn. You know, as we go further in the mode of ignorance, the stubbornness, the stubborn pride is the stubbornness. Determination is one thing, but stubbornness, that's another thing. That's stubborn like the mule. <laughs> the mule, the ass. The ass are known to be stubborn. You know, they, they just, uh, you know, do, do, do very foolish things. This proper gives the example, the, 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 the male donkey runs after the she, she donkey in for sex life, and then she just kicks him in the face. Boom! Get away from me. Boom! And it just keeps coming back again. And then boom! Again. <laughs> boom! <laughs> Stubborn like the ass. <laughs> so we become like that. Stubborn like the ass. To more or less varying degrees, so on and so forth. So this is due to that envy. So envy, these are these are great stumbling blocks. Uh, uh, to, to that envy. So knowing that, the great sages like Sutta Goswami <coughs> are very careful about how they present the supreme personality of God. They talk about him unlimited, ananta. They talk about him like that. He's present the controller of all. First of all, they established that. First, and, and so, so, first of all, they established that. So, and then, when they go in the past times, uh, um, you know, I was telling the story of, of um, on, on, on Sri Mati Radharani's appearance day of when Sri Dham uh, uh, cursed the Radha, you know, and, and then she had to come, and they both had to come to the world, and. and uh, and uh, you know, you were saying, he said to Radharani when she was angry with Krishna, she was saying so many things against Krishna. And he said to her, you know, you say all these things against my mind, but don't you know that he is the Lord of the worlds and from him so many creations and expansions come. So uh, uh, this is always uh, 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 referred to. So first of all, establish the greatness of the Lord. 
And then, because if you go straight into the pastime, especially the intimate pastime, people are just going to get envious. Krishna dancing with the gopis. You know, why can't I do that? And people do. They imitate the sahajas. It's like I remember one time uh, <clears throat> I was at uh, in Jaipur, went to the Radha Govinda temple, and there was a dance troupe in there. We were looking at what's going on, you know. So uh, uh, they were dancing. There was um, there, there was a whole. They were dancing. They were like gopis dancing, and then and then um, then one of them became Krishna, and uh, and then and dancing with all the gopis, and. Uh, <clears throat> And so I asked one of the, the priests there, I said, oh yeah, this is some Sahaja group. And they, <laughs> they try to think that they're, they're the gopis and they're, they're Krishna. And, they, and generally they, they have many girlfriends and lovers and things. Like that. So they think, well, Krishna, Krishna did like that, so we, we can do that. You see, try to imitate. So, but what is the greatness of Krishna? And we can't understand the position of Krishna from our limited, it's not possible to comprehend the greatness of Krishna, what to speak of the intimate pastime, with our uh, limited senses. This is the point that is made here. So, uh, uh, so, but the devotees, as far as their capacity, but still the devotees, especially the very, very advanced devotees, here the, the, the word is used that... Uh, um, uh, uh, Suda Goswami addresses the rishis who are as powerfully pure as the sun. So the very great devotees, the Lord empowers them uh, and gives them understanding more and more and more. Now we have to remember, as far as un unlimited, the Lord's potencies, his knowledge, his uh, qualities, it, it, it's always expanding. There's no saturation point. There's no limit the Lord, now, now I've read that where when the Lord expands his qualities and his activities, the, 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 uh, the chit potency also expands, his knowledge potency expands to uh, accommodate all that, to understand all that. So it is said that the Lord is unlimitedly expanding. We, we've got a, a, our experiences, things are limited, they, they go, but in the spiritual and then especially with the Supreme Lord, he is unlimited. And, and he can empower the great devotees powerfully, uh, they're powerfully pure as the sun. Now today is uh, interestingly uh, also just uh, powerfully pure as the sun. Last week you remember I was talking a little bit about Haridas Thakur. Today is the anniversary of the <coughs> appearance, uh, of, no the disappearance, the disappearance of uh, Srila Haridas Thakur. Uh, um, so how powerful how powerful, how pure is Haridas. Now he never thought that he was Krishna. He presented himself as a humble uh, uh, servant, very, very humble. Uh, uh, so he is an Acharya. So very interestingly, so I take this opportunity to say something about, uh, about uh, Haridas Thakur. Just to... Now, Haridas Thakur, according to my readings, there's different... Um, descriptions of uh, 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 who he was born to and even uh, where he was born <laughs> but generally is accepted that uh, um, uh, he was born on the what's now the uh, the Bangladesh and in a village called Burihana near Benapol Later on, last week I was talking about how he left home and travelled to Benapol in the forest and he stayed there and Ramchand Kandri became envious of his, uh, you know, that so many were respecting him and he sent that prostitute Lakshahiri to, you know, defame him and make him fall down. So he, he, Haridas Thakur, uh, you know, when he went to that forest, apparently he was born not so far away from there. And one account is that he was born actually uh, to a Brahmin family. <laughs> and his father's name was Sumati and his mother's name was Gauri. This is one account. And, but they died early so he was orphaned. And <clears throat> he, went, he was taken in by a, a, a very pious Muslim couple uh, by the name Khan. Uh, this is one uh, account. Another account is that actually <clears throat> he was born uh, 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 the son of uh, in, in the Muslim family, 
and the son of Kanola Kazi. This is called uh, from Advaita Vilas. Uh, and uh, so he was born in the Muslim so he was born in, But also in that, in that life, it seems that he was orphaned at a young age also. So this is the account. Now, according to Shastras, Guru Ganadesh Dipika, and also in the, in the um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's uh, Navadvip Dham Mahatma, there's an account of who the personality of, of Haridas Thakur was. Uh, so in the Guru Ganadesh Dipika, uh, it is mentioned that he is a combination of souls in, in one body. <clears throat> this is very astounding for us to comprehend how more than one soul, of course our body is made up of so many different souls, there's one prominent soul, but uh, 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 two, now according to Guru Ganadesh Dipika, it is said that he is a combination of Prahlad Maharaj <coughs> and uh, a personality called uh, uh, Brahma Mahatapa, who was the son of a Rishi named Richika, and he one time, <coughs> he <coughs> forgot to wash the tulsi leaves and he offered the unwashed tulsi leaves to Krishna <coughs> and his father became very angry he said you're a Malecha be born in a Malecha family and so <coughs> he took he appeared also in the body of Haridas Thakur along with Prahlad Maharaj and of course there's the eternal Haridas but anyway this, this is the, as he appeared in the world and then, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his Navadvip Dham Mahatmya, he said that when Krishna came into the world and Brahma, to test him, uh, stole away the cowherd boys and the cows and the calves and everything like that and kept them in the, in the mountain cave. Uh, and then when he looked back, Krishna manifested himself as all the boys and all the cows and everything like that when, and, and then he showed himself to be the supreme personality of God. So Brahma was very so uh, uh, remorseful at ha doing that to the supreme personality of Godhead that he bowed, fell down at the Lord's feet and begged forgiveness and, and the Lord uh, uh, very kindly forgave him. But Brahma thought that you know, I have done this because of my pride, because of my position as Brahma. So I don't want to do that. I, let, I, I, should, I should be born again in a humble position, in a low. Now I've got the high position. I want to be born in the, the low family. And so it is said that he went to the Navadweep area and <clears throat> he prayed to the Lord to come in his next incarnation that he would be born in a love family to, you know, uh, as, a, as a penance for what the offence he had committed in the, in the Krishna Leela. So it is said that actually Krishna came there in the form of Goranga and appeared to him and said, yes, you will take birth in the Muslim family and you will uh, be known as the Harida. So he revealed to him. So here's the combination of three personalities uh, of uh, Lord Brahma, of Prahlad, and uh, there's a uh, Brahma Mahatapa. Three in the one. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and it, 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 Gora informed him that actually I want to show in my incarnation that regardless of birth, caste, creed, if one takes up this uh, path of devotional service, this path of chanting, uh, then one can come to the topmost position. So you will be in a great Acharya. You will be a very great Acharya. And I want to show through you and others uh, the, these principles. So in that way, uh, he appears. So Haridas Thakur, uh, right from the beginning of his life, very great personality. Uh, and, and, and of course, we read so many stories uh, about, uh, I also told about Gopal Chakravarti, how Haridas Thakur was preaching the Holy Name. Later on, I know, uh, we, we know that he went to <coughs> Jagannath Puri to be near Lord Chaitanya. And he didn't go to the temple, uh, considering himself lowly, and so he just stayed outside, uh, just chanting. And he'd taken a vow to chant 300,000 names of the Lord daily. Therefore, Nama Charya Haridas Thakur. So, today's his uh, disappearance anniversary, 
And so there's a very wonderful section in Chaitanya Charamrita in the Anchalila, um, mm-hmm. chapter 11, that the, the passing of Haridas Thakur. The passing of Haridas Thakur. So something is so beautiful that <clears throat> one day Govinda, the personal servant, I'll just summarize it because of the whole chapter. One day Govinda, the personal servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, went in great jubilation to deliver the remnants of Lord Jagannath's uh, prasadam to Haridas Thakur. When Govinda came there, Haridas, he saw Haridas lying on his back, chanting his rounds very slowly. Please rise and take your Ma Prashada. Haridas replied, today I shall observe fasting. I have not finished chanting my rounds. How can I eat? But you've bought Ma Prashadam. How can I neglect it? Saying this, he offered prayers to the Ma took a little portion and ate it. The next day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Haridasa's place and inquired from Haridas, are you well? My body is all right, but my mind and intelligence are not very well. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu further inquired, can you ascertain what your disease is? Haridas replied, my disease is that I cannot complete my rounds. <laughs> so Prabhupada actually mentions here, interestingly, that uh, if one cannot complete the fixed number of rounds he has assigned, he should be considered to be in a diseased condition of spiritual life. Of course, we cannot imitate Haridas Thakur, but everyone must chant a prescribed number of rounds. In our Krishna conscious movement, we have fixed 16 rounds as minimum so that the Westerners will not feel burdened. These 16 rounds must be chanted and chanted loudly so one can hear himself and others. Very nice instruction by Prabhupada. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya said, now that you become old, you may reduce the number of your rounds uh, that you chant. Now you're already liberated, therefore you need not follow the regular principle so strictly. Your role in this incarnation is to deliver the people in general. You have sufficiently preached the glories of the holy name. Uh, now therefore please reduce the fixed number of times you chant. Haridas Thakur said, please hear my real plea. I was born in an inferior family. My body is most abominable. I always engage in low work. Therefore, I'm the lowest, most condemned of men. Humble he is. But you have accepted me as your servant. <clears throat> therefore, that, this means you have delivered me from the hellish condition and raised me to the Vaikuntha platform. Uh, <clears throat> you act according to your own free will. You cause the whole world to dance and act as you like. By your mercy, you have made me dance. Uh, in so many ways but I have had one desire for a very long time I think that quite soon you will bring to a close your pastimes in the material world I wish that you not show me this closing chapter of your pastimes uh, before that time comes kindly let my body fall down in your presence I wish to catch your lotus like feet upon my heart and see your moon like face with my tongue I shall chant your holy name, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. That is my desire. Kindly let me give up my body in this way. Beautiful way to give up your body. <clears throat> if by your mercy it is possible, you can let this low-born body fall down before you. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My dear Haridas, Krishna is so merciful that he must execute whatever you want. But whatever happiness I have, Lord Chaitanya said, is due to your association. It is not fishing, not fitting that you go away and leave me behind. <laughs> Catching the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Haridas said, My Lord, do not create an illusion. While I am fallen, you must certainly show me this mercy. My Lord, if an insignificant insect dies like me dies, what is the loss? Uh, you are always affectionate to your devotees. I am just an imitation devotee. But nevertheless, I wish that you fulfill my desire. Because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go for his noon duties, he got up to leave. But it was settled that the following day, after he would see Lord Jagannath, he returned to Haridas Thakur. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so when he came back, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, my dear Haridas, what's the news? Haridas said, whatever mercy you can bestow upon me. Upon hearing this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began great congregational chanting in the courtyard. Bakrashwar Pandit was the chief dancer. Headed by Sarup Damada, Goswami, all the devotees surrounded Haridas and began chanting. And then at some point Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to describe the great attributes and qualities of Hari. In the midst of the chanting, in a very loud voice, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described the transcendental qualities of Haridas Thakur. And it seemed like he possessed five mouths. He was just going on. The more he described, the more his happiness increased. Uh, Haridas Thakur made Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sit down in front of him. Then he fixed his eyes on him. He held the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on his heart. On his heart. Then took the dust of all the devotees present. Put that on his head. Began to chant the holy name Krishna Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya again and again. Tears glided down from his eyes. While chanting the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he gave up his air of life and left his body. Seeing the wonderful death of Haridas Thakur uh, by his own will, there was a tumultuous noise and they all increased their chanting of the holy names Hari and Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with ecstatic love. He raised the body of Haridas Thakur and placed the body on his lap. Then he began to dance in the courtyard with his body chanting uh, and everyone joined in and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced for some time but then Surud Damada said there's some rituals to perform for the deceased Bodhi Bharidas was then raised onto the carrier and taken to the sea accompanied by chanting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself danced in front of the procession Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally bathed the body of Haridas Thakur in the sea took him in bathed him in the sea and then declared from this day on this sea has become a great pilgrimage site everyone drank the water that touched the lotus feet of Haridas Thakur they smeared the remnants of Lord Jagannath's sandwood pulp over Haridas Thakur's body a hole was dug in the sand the body of Haridas was placed into it remnants from the Lord Jagannath so silken robes sandwood pulp food and cloth were placed on the body all the devotees were kept chanting and dancing uh, with his, trans his own transcendental hand, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally covered the body of Haridas Thakur with sand. And all along he was chanting, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. <laughs> the devotees covered the body of Haridas with sand and then constructed a platform upon that site. The platform was protected all around by fencing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced and chanted all around the platform and as the holy name of Hari roared tumultuously, the whole universe became filled with the vibration. Uh, after Sankatan, they bathed in the sea, all the devotees bathed in the sea, swimming and playing in the water with great jubilation. After circumambulating the tomb of Haridas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the Jagannath temple, uh, approaching the temple, especially the, the Singhadvara gate, he began to beg prasadam from everyone to make a nice feast in honor of Haridas Thakur. Uh, so he went, he personally went to please give me answer. Then, then the devotees approached him, no, we, we'll do that, my lord. You, you, where we and so uh, all the devotees gathered all the arms, all the shopkeepers came out and gave so much. A big feast was cooked and everyone sat down <coughs> and, and, and then they had a big, big feast celebrating. So it is mentioned here that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had mixed, he was elated in ecstasy, but then he had a, a, a feeling of, you know, uh, separation, being separated from Haridas Thakur. So, this is a very wonderful uh, uh, um, pastime. Uh, um, if uh, we could all uh, leave this world, uh, you know, sometimes I think if I could leave this world with a rip roar and kiritan going on around. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in ecstasy. I don't think I'm going to be that lucky, but pick up those wampers, <laughs> bang that drum louder, <laughs> jam, <laughs> and then oh, that's it. <laughs>
So right in, so Hari Das Thakur, I mean, you know, has a lot of feet and he's there and looking at him right in front of Lord Chaitanya. So this is an amazing story of Hari Das, powerfully pure as the sun. You know. uh, so uh, they never think they're Krishna, they're very humble and like that. So uh, Sudha Goswami, going back to the verse today, Sudha Goswami is making that point. So thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Does anyone have any questions or comments in regard to today's verse or Haridas Thakur? So Marjorie mentioned in the verse about the three different aspects of Krishna. Um, so when we talk about Bhakti Yoga, that's service to Bhagavan aspect. Mm. But um, the super soul, um, how does this bhakti yoga, there's no real concept of serving super soul, it's more the object of meditation for their stomach yogis? I think bhakti starts at the level of the. Of course, uh, um, um, yes, that is a, a meditation. You know, uh, uh, the, the Lord of Super Soul is. In one sense, in a passive state, he is overseeing, he is witnessing. Although he he is actively arranging things, but as far as reciprocation, there's not that level of intimacy on that level. So on the but on and as far as impersonal Brahman, that's another just existential you know position. Uh, and uh, uh, but and, and, uh, and Bhagavan, it's a little bit more developed, at least uh, the form of the Lord, and then meditation is there. And Bhagavan, of course, the, then then relationships develop, uh, and so on and so on. So, so is that your know, answer? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Yes. Just on the idea of having multiple living entities in my body. Sorry. Multiple living entities in yeah. my body. Like I mean, in a car, you can have several people. Uh, how it works, I don't know whether they uh, talk to each other about it. Okay, who's going to take the lead on this? <laughs> I'm not privy to that level of information. <laughs> all right, there's three of us here, you know, all right. <laughs> who's going to make the decision? Is it a kind of a debate? No, no, I, I think it should go this way. <laughs> Somehow or other, I don't know, maybe Maharaj has read some description of how that works. Have you read anything, man? Um, not directly, but I, I would think that it's about the, the giving to identities according to how they act, and they act differently in different situations. So, mm-hmm. like Ravana and Roy, the sometimes Lalita, he acts like that. Oh. Well, it's, sometimes he acts like Vishaka. Hmm. Sometimes he's Arjuna because he was, <coughs> you know, related to that. Oh, I see. Like this, so, uh, like the five Pandavas, like this. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> according to the situation, he acts. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, very good. There you go. So according to the situation, yeah, they uh, one takes the lead and the other one steps back. <laughs> this is very good. All right, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Jai Om Glory to Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai.